Hello there, Geminis. Welcome to your reading. When I was meditating on this reading for you, I saw two images. And the first thing is um, I see this cathedral and it looks like it doesn't look to me like it's a modern day. It looks like it might be the 1800s. There's this woman, she's in there and she waits for all the people to leave the church or the cathedral. And then she kind of quietly sits by herself in one of the pews, okay? So she's looking at the stained glass, she's looking at the candles flicker, and she is there because she wants that peace, the solitude, and the silence. So when I saw this image, I feel like there is a decision that you are making, or you're, you're trying to figure out what is the best course of action, and you're trying to drown out other people's uh, inputs other people's ideas you want to just sit by yourself with yourself to contemplate and mull over this decision i also feel as well some of you are in major need of alone time and quiet time you feel like people might be encroaching upon your space or you feel as if you don't have a moment of peace or a moment of alone time or downtime to yourself and I feel like you have a lot of things that you need to sort out through. And I also feel like there might be a crisis when it comes to faith, when it comes to what do you believe in, what you're expected to do. And if you were, you know, making this decision in a bubble or in a vacuum, I'm feeling that the decision, the, the solution or the choices that you make would be very, very different from if you had to make this decision with the inputs of other people, okay? So the energy is quite similar to the mid-March 2019 reading where you're mulling over a decision and I feel almost like you know what course of action you need to take but there seems to be a lot of things. Um, it's like there, there are many, many things that you're trying to factor out as a, or factor in the decision-making process. And I, I almost feel like you're still weighing out the pros and cons and trying to move ahead with the decision. For many of you, this is very much financially, um, it, it's like a financial decision. And I feel like the problem itself is not so much finance related, but the ramifications of it or the consequence of making this re result or making this decision might result in a little bit of a financial strain on your end. And as a result of that, you might not feel like you want to go ahead with it. The other image I saw immediately after this, and um, it's actually very beautiful because uh, I see this woman, she's got a little kid in hand. She seems like she might be a single mom. And she's at this, um, this like general grocery store, um, you know, back in the days. This looks more like a scene in the Wild West, okay? And she's, um, she's, got, she's got like a little convenience store. So she's in this big convenience store trying to get all of her um, stuff to stock inventory for her tiny convenience store that's far away in the village and so she's ordering a lot of stuff the uh, manager of the store is preparing all of this for her he bundles everything up and then he leaves it outside so she has to find a way to haul all of these things that she has to uh, buy or she's already bought back to her store in the village and then this man comes by with a wagon and he's just like, you know, I'm heading that way. Let me just um, give you a hand. Let me uh, load this up for you. So he loads up his little carriage and he told her, you're more than welcome to sit with me or if you can arrange for a ride, then I'll just meet you there. And so she, she gets into the, 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 the coach with him and she, he takes her back to her village. And I don't see there's anything, you know, like uh, sketchy about this at all because I feel like, you know, he, he's just a good Samaritan. He's passing by and he's offering um, assistance, okay? So I feel like there is a situation in your life. It might feel like, you know, you're standing in front of that supermarket or that, that store and you have all of these things that you need to move back to somewhere that's far away. And you might not feel like you have a way to do that. And so immediately, I feel like the two images might be connecting with one another in that you're praying for something or you're trying to find a solution to something and you're trying to sit still and, and you know, trying to figure things out on your own. 
But what it's saying is that there will be willing people that are going to be able to extend um, an offer of goodwill or a, a helping hand. So you're not as alone in this as you think. And then whoever is coming into the picture to help you, I feel like, you know, there's no strings attached. It's just a good Samaritan that's on the standby that's being sent for you. It's almost like your prayers are being answered because somebody's going to come in out of the goodwill of their uh, heart they're going to offer assistance and they don't really want anything in return okay so i feel like if there is a big situation and especially if you're kind of like trying to figure out how do i do this the task in front of me seems so insurmountable it seems very costly i might need to hire movers i might need to um, hire people to help me with this project or help me with this endeavor but I feel like, you know, a, a helping hand is coming into the picture to be able to kind of um, facilitate the, the, the transition process for you. That's what it feels like to me. So let's talk about um, the, the spread that's in front of me here. So first of all, there has been some major, major changes and transitions happening in your work environment. So we have here the death card, which indicates transformation. Okay. And then we have the six of pentacles, which is traditionally, it's a work card. Okay. And so I, this is what I'm feeling here. Um, you have all the choices, all the options laid out in front of you, right in front of you on this table. And you're trying to figure out what you need to tackle first, what you need to take care of, what demands your utmost attention. And you have to kind of triage and you have to prioritize to see what you can, you know, get out of the way first. So I do feel like there has been a lot of changes and transitions happening. And as a result of it, I feel for many of you, you might need to like leave some projects behind you, whatever it is that you have been personally very invested in, you're going to have to, you know, kind of like let somebody else take care of it. And I'm also seeing you mulling over some of these changes. This is sort of like a stalemate. Okay. The two of swords, not making a decision, uh, blindfolded, not feeling like you have all the information at your disposal and not really knowing who around your environment you can trust and as well not knowing what's going to happen not knowing the outcome of a specific situation so in the meantime you're kind of in this state where you are procrastinating or even hesitating about making a major decision so even though the change is coming and you know that the change is very prominent I feel like you're still sitting there trying to buy more time or trying to hope that the situation is going to get better or at least trying to figure out some clarity in the situation so that you can move forward and make a decision where you feel 100% certain, okay? So I definitely feel like, you know, once again, um, you're, you're, you're looking for more information. You're looking for more certainty. You're looking for more clarity. And I feel like you have procrastinated on a major decision here. And I also sense as well, there have been a lot of people just involved in the picture and expecting you to do things a certain way. And you're at a point where you're starting to realize that you need to make this decision alone. We have here the magician and the magician is the manifester. He has everything that is required um kind of set out on this table in front of him and all he has to do is kind of like synthesize the knowledge to be able to delve a little bit deeper and to be able to figure out whatever it is where that his knowledge might be lacking so you're in a very powerful position but i definitely feel there have been a lot of financial considerations really weighing on on you and as a result of it you haven't really been making any type of movement or moving forward mainly because there is a heavy financial burden here i'm seeing for many of you um there's this sense of feeling indebted okay so i don't know if it's like physically um feeling like you might not have the proper resources to do something or somebody has helped you with something in the past and they helped you in exchange for something that you were supposed to do for them. But in the past, you might have been very gung-ho about, you know, um, 
doing whatever it was that they wanted or expected of you because you know there was a time where they they came in and they helped you they gave you resources or they really you know helped move things along for you but there were strings attached and you feel indebted and you feel almost like you're supposed to continue on that course of action that you promised them but now the 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 game has changed the rules have changed and you're not feeling emotionally invested in this situation anymore. And you're trying to move on doing what you feel would be best, but you feel indebted or you feel like you can't really shirk your responsibility because you made a promise or you made a vow or you told them that you're going to be committed to it, but your heart is no longer in it. That's what it feels like. You're trying to manifest new things in your life and you're trying to as well manifest a lot more financial abundance and i feel like many of you are at a point where you have a lot of ideas percolating in the back of your mind but as an air sign you guys are very much like the thinker of the zodiac you have a lot of ideas have a lot of plans but when it comes to, you know, implementing these plans, I feel like you might lack the practical considerations in order to come up with a business plan, come up with a proposal, um, set pen to paper and, you know, create a blueprint to be able to manifest it in a physical and a tangible way. Or you might be hoping somebody would come in and to, you know, partner up or do this thing with you because you feel like your strengths might be in the planning stages. But when it comes to executing it, you feel like you need another person, somebody who has that, you know, the, the fire, the drive, the ambition, the person that uh, gets things moving. And so you might be waiting for this person to come into the picture and you feel like, um, I'm just sensing that the universe is really pushing you. It's it's really, really pushing you to act on this. But you're still hesitant. You're still waiting. You're still stuck in this state where you feel like you might not have all the information. But I feel like you, you do. Okay. Um, we have here the Nine of Pentacles. This is a card about self-employment. This is like making your financial resources grow for you. This is managing other people. This is being able to dictate your own hours, being able to come up with some type of a business plan, a business proposal, where you are definitely in charge of your finances and you don't have to answer to another person. Many of you are really uh, contemplating, shifting, possibly from like a regular nine to five job working under other people and shifting into this type of an environment. And what I feel happening with the Six of Pentacles here is it's a situation where we have already mastered our craft, okay? We have already understood or learned all the ins and outs, all the inner workings behind the scenes, in front of the scenes. We already know how all the pieces of the puzzle fit together. So if we were to run this operation and if we were to, you know, be put in charge, there wouldn't be any problems because you already know how things work. You already know the ins and out and the, um, I guess like the technicalities behind the scenes, you already know what it requires. And I feel like it's other people that you have to answer to that's creating a lot more blockages for you. If you were left to your own devices, you feel like you could definitely do it. But what I see with this magician is that he is facing a little bit of self-doubt, okay? His hands aren't really on top of the table touching the elements. He's just kind of looking at it. So he has learned everything in a very theoretical way and he's trying to apply theory to practice. And he feels like there might be some knowledge gap or he feels like he might not have all the skills or the capabilities and hence he might be waiting for another person to come in and kind of mix all the elements for him. And so what I feel right here is it's telling you to overcome this inertia and it's telling you to really, really make a move and not be stuck in this type of a stalemate anymore because change and transformation is coming and you have some really, really big um, financial, lucrative financial ideas that needs to be kind of like planted in the ground and it needs to be 
worked out it needs to kind of like been uh, it needs to be brought into the physical world in order for it to thrive and i feel like you're still at the point where you're contemplating and you're still at a point where you're trying to decide you know is there enough resources can i take this risk can i go ahead with this venture will there be a lot of financial loss for me or can i do this on my own so there's definitely a lot of hes hesitation from your end as to I i'm seeing like you know cold feet that's what it feels like to me. A lot of cold feet, a lot of overthinking, a lot of analyzing, a lot of just looking on. And even though you feel like I'm sensing many of you, you're 95% like sure that you can do it. Once you touch it, once you move it uh, forward with it, you're going to have a lot of success and a lot of financial abundance. But there's something here that indicates to me that uh, you're hesitant mainly because you know of that five percent uncertainty okay which is a very very small probability but either way it, it does create a lot of worries and a little bit of trepidation inside of you that's not allowing you to move forward with something that you feel very compelled to do uh what i'm feeling as well we have the moon card in the fr uh, front and center of the spread the moon indicates our intuition it indicates our emotional security and the things that we need emotionally to make us feel fulfilled. And I feel like for many of you, your ultimate drive is to not have to answer to other people, to have not have to work under other people, to be free, to be able to have your leisure time, to be able to dictate your own hours. So self-employment is really big here for, for many of you where you feel like you're more than capable and you actually like the, the the flexibility of being able to have that you know free time to yourself and to be able to work when you feel inspired to and then you know take a break when you feel like your creative juices have run dry so i feel like you really want to get this off the ground and whatever it is it, it seems to me like it's more self-employment it seems like it's a lot more um like investment watching your money grow and trying to find avenues and 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 routes where you can put your money and to be able to have it work for you okay um, what i'm also seeing as well is we do have a water sign here so this is a pisces a cancer or a scorpio type of energy we have here the page of cups and uh, it's linked up here with the Four of Rods. This is traditionally a marriage card, okay? This is a family card, a marriage card. And usually what I'm sensing is we have a water sign here that you might be in a relationship with. And it's linked up as well with the Eight of Cups. This is a situation that we have invested a lot of time, a lot of emotional um, resources, a lot of time resources emotions as well as um energy into a situation and it is the cups energy which indicates it's something that is emotional in nature uh once upon a time you know it really stirred you emotionally and you want it to be there you want it to kind of like build up to that apex of emotional happiness which is the ten of cups but somewhere along the way especially for the past two years okay um, somewhere along the way things went awry and I, I almost feel like a lot of you feel almost as if something is missing as if this emotional situation could be a little bit lopsided or somebody is not emotionally invested in it as much as you are so if this is a relationship in particular um, in the time 2018 you might have felt like it was lacking something and I feel as if you were trying to figure out what it was, like what was really missing. Can I fix it? Can it be fixed? Can I invest more time, energy, and further resources and more sunk costs into this situation to make it better? And I feel like within the past two years, you have really been trying to stay ahead of the game, to invest a lot more time and energy into the situation because you thought it could be fixed. And I feel like the month of April is a situation where you're starting to think that maybe you're a lot happier and a lot more content just doing your own thing. So I feel like for many of you, you might be contemplating moving away from an emotional situation or the other person might as well 
um, be trying to move away from the situation because they're feeling like the situation is lackluster. There's something missing and I feel like there's something missing but both parties might not know exactly what is missing. So I'm seeing a situation that could potentially be quite stagnant. I'm seeing a situation where things are like subpar, things are not at their best, but both parties have trouble figuring out how to fix things, how to, you know, fill it, fill things up so that it can reach that 10 of cups um, sort of emotional stability and happiness. So there's something very lopsided here and both parties don't really know what to do and how to fix it. And I feel like somebody might be emotionally checked out of a situation, especially if you're dealing with a water sign. So I have the death card, which denotes Scorpio. I have the moon card, which normally denotes Pisces, but I also have as well the page of cups. So Cancer, Pisces, Scorpio. Um, I see a water sign that's having, that's going through kind of like a, a major, major metamorphosis in their life. They're going through some major transitions. They're going through as well a lot of changes in their emotional state. Um, I'm, I'm seeing like a, a change in preferences, okay? So what that means is, you know, whatever they've liked like two years ago, I feel like they're going through some major revival or major change when it comes to the things that, you know, the foods that they eat, the things that they like, the, the extracurricular activities that they spend their time on. Their friendship circle might have undergone some drastic changes. And then I'm also seeing from your end, Gemini, where I feel like the things that you thought you wanted before, you're reassessing. So both partner, I'm feeling, are, um, are going through major transformations in their own lives. The things that they thought they cared about, they don't care about as much anymore. So if one partner, if one partner has been like very stable, very dependable, and has always played the role of the provider, I feel like the responsibilities for that partner, um, the partner doesn't want to do that anymore. And then if the other person has been a little bit more frivolous, a little bit more carefree, now they're a little bit more obsessive about savings, a little bit more obsessive about retirement, a little bit more obsessive about, you know, nickel and diming and seeing how much resources they have at their disposal. So I'm seeing a major like um, role reversal in a situation where uh, two people might have like uh, might switch over when it comes to the roles that they play in the relationship If one person might have been more controlling I feel like they're easing up and they're letting the other person just kind of do their thing If one person has been very lax and carefree now they're getting a little bit possibly a little bit nervous or paranoid that their partner might leave them so I do see a situation where a relationship needs to be tweaked, it needs to be fixed because somebody feels a little bit emotionally left out or emotionally unfulfilled in a particular relationship. And then I'm also seeing this emotional barrier and rift between you and a significant other where they come to you but they feel almost like you enjoy your free time, you want to be left alone and you might have other things that are really occupying your time, your energy, your thoughts, and they just don't feel like they're able to reach you, okay? And in particular, if you're dealing with a water sign, the thing about water signs is that, um, especially the Cancer and Pisces, they need a lot of together time. They need to uh, share experiences and, and bounce ideas off of their uh, partner, okay? Scorpios are really good about doing their own thing, making their own decisions, and not needing a lot of contact, okay? Scorpio is a fixed sign, so, and you know, Scorpios, they're very, very emotionally strong. They're probably the, the strongest sign of the zodiac, and I feel like they're very self-sufficient, but when it comes to water, the other two water signs, Cancer and Pisces in particular, especially uh, Cancer, they need a lot of attention. They need a lot of, uh, I almost want to say like um, 
being treated with like kitty gloves. They need a lot of attention. They need to be treated in a very, very soft, careful manner. So I feel like a partner in your relationship, if you're dealing with water signs, they might feel a little bit neglected, okay? So this is just something for you to um, keep in mind as we progress through the month of April and try to, you know, be physically available and emotionally available to that partner. If you're feeling them kind of drift away or if you're feeling them, uh, if you're feeling that their energy is a little bit further away from you, like they're drifting away or they are, there's that emotional rift or that emotional distance between the two of you. Um, we end up the month here with the three of rods and the three of rods. This is kind of like waiting for your ship to come in. Okay. This is a really good card, which basically means, um, things coming in on the horizon. It's, it's almost like whatever you have been anticipating, it's already planted. It's like things are coming along already put in the pipelines and they're going to be coming in for you, which basically means you're just going to be waiting for it and it's going to be coming in the month of April. And what I'm sensing for many of you, new friendships, okay? The Page of Cups energy, this is like offers of love, offers of friendship, offers of dating. Um, you might have somebody in your environment that you're heavily considering or heavily looking at. I see somebody who's very childlike. Their energy is very buoyant, very playful, very childlike. And I feel like they're very sweet and they have a really good heart. So there's somebody coming in in the picture that you are waiting on. So they might be coming to traveling to see you. You might as well thinking about making a trip and traveling to see them. Um, what I'm seeing is there is a water sign as well that you might be waiting on. You might be waiting on a decision from them or you might be moving away from one situation, making yourself single in order to pursue, you know, new things that are coming into the picture for you. So I'm going to pull out three more cards just to see what the death card signifies. So what we have here is the lovers and this is your card Gemini the lovers indicates a situation where we are really emotionally as well as physically attracted to another person okay so you might be dealing as well with another Gemini so we have a, a, a mirroring type of an energy here and I feel like we have the nine of swords and this is a situation where there is some guilt there's some trepidation. There is a person that's really um, creating a lot of a, a lot of worries, a lot of anxieties um, in your love sector. And we have as well the King of Cups, very strong water energy. And I usually see this as a Scorpio energy, but in this spread, it just screams out water sign. So Scorpio, Pisces, Cancer. There might have been some argument, some uh, major changes that are happening in their lives. I usually think of the Nine of Swords as somebody who's dealing with loss, who's dealing with depression, who is potentially dealing with some hardships in their life. And I feel like it's creating a situation where they're hard to be around. What I'm also sensing is I feel like there's somebody that is making emotional demands on you that you are not in a position to reciprocate. It's almost like the emotional realm or the emotional demands might be a little bit too much for you and you're not really sure what to do. So I feel like there's somebody in your environment that is like this. And I especially see as well, um, there might be a little bit of arguments, fights, or somebody trying to walk out or trying to move away from a relationship because they're not feeling like their emotional needs are met, okay? And they feel like they've uh, invested a lot of time, a lot of energy to fix the situation or move the situation along, but they're not seeing um, traction. They're not seeing like they're, they're able to make any progress. So if this sounds like somebody that you care about and somebody that you are romantic involved with it is really important for you to do the damage control to be able to repair the situation and to kind of like mend that emotional um, 
emotional distance between the two of you otherwise they're kind of like on their way out okay so i feel like somebody might be trying to exit the picture um i'm seeing there might be a little bit of um okay so i feel like you're dealing with somebody who knows a lot but they don't reveal how much they know so when they tell you one thing they already know 10 other things that are involved with the situation and so you have to be very brutally honest with them because i feel like they're trying to it's like you know uh trying to unravel something okay like opening up a wrapper or um like a ball of yarn and you're trying to you know pull on the thread or the, pull on the string and you're trying to ravel some, unravel something and I feel like the other person might be uh, the one that knows a lot and they might be keeping you in the dark as to how much they know just to see how much they you are willing to reveal it's almost like they're putting in something in front of your eyes and they're telling you you know this is how much I know, but I feel like deep down they know a lot more. So it's really, really important that you are completely honest and truthful about this situation because they know a lot more than they let on. And they're just trying to play along to see how much you know so that they can gauge whether or not you are 100% willing to share with them or willing to share your knowledge with them and they want to see whether or not they are able to trust you so there is some situation here you have it's a little bit slippery and sly and you have to be uh, just very brutally honest and you have to you know really look at what's laid out in front of you and be strategic when you are answering questions okay and especially if you're dealing with a water sign um water signs are innately very very psychic and they know when we hold back information or they in, have this innate sense of like it's like this in built-in sixth sense and they know when something is not right and they're very skittish as well when they're they feel like something is not 100 percent right they're going to be moving away from that situation because it, it's not a place that they feel safe in and if they, they don't feel safe in something they're going to retreat um and in particular if you are dealing with um a scorpio they will know and they don't, don't like to be lied to if you're dealing with a cancer cancers are very very skittish so just look at the crab at the beach, okay? They go sideways, and if they spot something, they're very, very skittish. If they spot humans, if they spot um, other predators, they're going to be, you know, beeline it for the water so that they're out of sight and that they can protect themselves. So you're dealing with somebody who wants to emotionally protect themselves, and they would not put themselves in a situation where they want to get hurt. And as a result of that, if there is an emotional rift, or if there is some mistrust, or if there has been, you know, like just problematic communication between you and them, I feel like it's really important to mend this relationship, okay? So I'm going to leave it at that. I feel like finances and money looks really, really good for you. Um, a lot of you are shifting into, you know, like trying to get some type of funding or a loan or seeing a financier to be able to get a loan in order to start a business. So I feel a lot of people uh, starting out to be able to, you know, like rolling into self-employment, contemplating with self-employment, trying to bring something off the ground or get something off the ground so that you can be, you know, in charge of your own work and especially to be able to um, work for yourself. So it looks really good. For those who are already self-employed, um, I feel like there might be some other people that are leaving the picture because their home environment is not entirely stable. They might have uh, marital problems. They might have, you know, family issues. Their kids might have trouble in school. And so they're going to be calling out sick. So, you know, if you're in a position where you're working with other colleagues, they might not be readily available in the month of May of April because they're taking care of a lot of other things. So just be gentle with them, wait for them, allow them that time and that space to deal with their own family issues, okay? But they will come back. And I feel like 
it's not that they're reneging on their responsibility. It's just they have a lot that they're dealing with and that's why they're not available or they're not as reliable as you would like. So be gentle when you're dealing with other people and be very, very honest and to review information where you see fit because I keep seeing somebody who knows a lot more than they let on and they're fishing around trying to figure out how much you already know and whether or not you're willing to share that information with them. They already know it, but whether or not you trust them enough to, you know, give them privilege information, okay? so. For those of you who are interested in a reading, I have included a link in the description box below for a psychic. Her name is Bridget. She's based out of California. She is phenomenal. I highly recommend that you get a reading with her. If you're looking for a reader or you're, if, you are, uh, if you know somebody who might need some spiritual advice or guidance, I highly recommend that you book a reading with her. All right. So once again, her information is in the description box below. Um, I will be back in about two weeks time for your mid-month reading. Take care of yourself.